Today we're facing off against MV and the Big Nuggets. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the matchup, then we'll get a look at the team that I'm planning to bring to the battle, and then we'll get right into the match. First of all, MV is kind of one of the most insane opponents. This dude, he's not only one of the greatest singles players, but also he has a ton of draft league experience, and I believe he's even won a few leagues. So, while well, I'm just coming into this with basically vibes, and I'm going to need to try to get creative uh, to come out on top on this one, because MV is insane. So we can look at our full drafts and then kind of take a look at all of our options we have for team building. Now, obviously, first thing I'm afraid of is going to be that Annihilate. That thing has a great opportunity to run bulky against my team and a Drain Punch set with Ice Punch to cover for, you know, Gliscor is insanely scary. I did a lot of practice against this thing and Annihilate is the number one Pokemon that I'm going to have to try to break through and it's not going to be easy because it's definitely going to run bulky and this thing never dies and pretty much Oko's everything in return. So. That thing is extremely scary. The second thing is obviously going to be the Raging Bolt. It has the priority with the Thunderclap. Uh, this thing can also be pretty bulky and hits you know, decently hard. I do have Jolteon to uh, decently check this thing, especially you know, with I have the Terra Fairy option. Um, so Raging Bolt, I at least do have a solid answer for. But of course, that thing is you know a massive threat. Some other things that I am very afraid of is considering my team has a double Intimidate core with the Gyarados and the Hitmontop to run the option to go with Double Intimidate. I have to really worry about that because Annihilate does have Defiant, so I'd give it Attack Boost instead. Also, they do have Empoleon to run the option for Competitive. So, Intimidate is not looking super good for me in this matchup. Um, but he has things like the Mew. Obviously, Mew can run any, uh, any moves pretty much possible. It did lose access to some healing moves. Uh, but in general, Mew is a good Pokemon for Envy because this dude's creative. He can basically take it any direction that he wants. Um, one of his Terra Captains being Flygon is extremely scary because this thing, after setting up some Dragon Dances, it can run something like a Terra Steel, which does really good against my team. Um, you know, he just has the bulk with the Pheasantivity, the Cleaver to set up Stealth Rocks. One important note is the Weavile actually is his fastest Pokemon on his team. It actually speed ties with my Darkrai. So... Uh, that's going to be an interesting kind of matchup there. I want to bring my Hitmontop to guarantee that I can Mach Punch uh, and take care of that thing. Um, but in general, he has a lot of options on this team. He could even run with like Sun in the Vulpix with the you know, Tropius over there. Um, but it's looking to be a pretty scary matchup. And let's go ahead and take a look under the hood at the team that I'm going to bring here. All right, so first of all, I do have a plan to be able to take care of the Annihilate. And if this doesn't work, I'm kind of out of luck, but it's one of my best ways... Uh, to deal with it without it putting you know, too much of a hole in my team. And that comes in the form of weakness policy, acrobatics, Gliscor. So here's the thing, I have this thing invested enough to pretty much guarantee that I can take an Ice Punch from that Annihilate. It is actually interesting, Annihilate can be faster than me. So my plan is to, basically, I'm going to try to lure in the Annihilate, click Agility, and if he's faster after the Agility, um, I'm going to take an Ice Punch, activate the weakness policy, and now I'm faster than their entire team after an agility. Now the thing is, I need to go for the acrobatics, and with this attack investment, that should be able to Oko kind of a fully bulky ape. So this Gliscor, it's here to kind of bluff being, you know, a general, you know, standard Gliscor as like a bulky set to try to like toxic the thing. But I imagine he might be running something like Rest. Uh, knowing that that's kind of my best option. So trying to catch them off guard with an agility, weakness policy, acrobat acrobatics, fly score um, is going to be, you know, my best shot at taking care of that thing. So that's what Gliscar is here for, and we'll see if we can get that to work out. Next up, we are bringing the Dark right here. It is coming this week, and that is because with the Timid Nature, I am I, I tie his fastest Pokemon. And I know that I can likely take an attack from the Weavile, um, but the plan here is running Expert Belt. I actually have Drain Punch, because even without any attack investment, that does take care of the Weavile being four times weak, and I can get some health back. So, you know, if I lose a speed tie, get a Drain Punch off, that is totally fine. Uh, other than that, I'm here to Nasty Plot, Psy Shock, and Dark Pulse everything. Psy Shock is going to be good for hitting the Pheasantipity, as that's kind of his special sponge. But if I hit it on the physical side with the Psy Shock, using its physical defense, um, that can be really nice for me. Next up, we have the Stevie. Obviously, Jolteon is the fastest mod in the game here, and I am running a little bit of an in interesting set. So, I have Mirror Herb. The reason is because if I can get in front of something that wants to set up, I can be in a great spot. This thing is with the Terra Fairy to check the Raging Bolt really well. Um, obviously, Raging Bolt can't go for an electric move with the Volt Absorb. I can go Terra Fairy. It can't really touch me with any dragon. 
and it's going to have a bad time, which should allow me to potentially Calm Mind, but I could also switch into the Raging Bolt going for the Calm Mind. I have the Alluring Voice for the coverage. I also have Weather Ball, and that pairs with the Galarian Sloking, where I can set up my Snow, and then Weather Ball is going to be able to one-hit KO uh, the threat of the Toad Squirrel, being four times weak to Ice. Weather Ball turning to Ice uh, in the Snow could be pretty helpful. But other than that, this thing looks really nice, being able to set up Calm Minds, um, Alluring Voice for things like Flygon, and Thunderbolt just for some solid damage. So if I can get a Mirror Herb to come in on something setting up and kind of steal some speed boost or uh, like a Calm Mind of theirs, that would be actually amazing. So this thing's running pretty standard, just a lot of special attack. It's fast enough to be able to outspeed its entire his entire team, and then just a little bit of uh, extra bulk. So that now brings us to the Galarian Slow King. This thing is working with the Black Sludge, and that is for the option to run Trick against the Annihilate. If I come in, um, on Annihilate, I can trick that thing to Black Sledge, it'll get some chip on it every turn. Um, and it's just like kind of a secondary backup option against the Ape. But, then we have Psyshock, again, that's gonna be a nice stab against the Fazendipity, trying to hit that thing on the physical defense side rather than special is kind of the only way to kill it because it just has so much special defense. Uh, then I have Focus Blast for things like the Weavile and the Chili Reception to try to grab some momentum, but also he set up the Snow for the Surprise Weather Ball for the, uh, the freaking Toad Squirrel. Uh, this thing is running max physical defensive to be able to get off the trick against an ape um, and in general just is here to be bulky so next up we have the a the beyblade obviously the spinning boy is going to come out dancing i'm rocking with the rocky helmet here this is going to be my answer against uh switching into the cleaver basically i know that with the rocky helmet there's not much that the cleaver can do to me it does like 20 percent with its strongest attack to fully uh, max HP and with the attack investment I can obviously knock out the Weavile with the Mach Punch. I have triple axle for things like that Raging Bolt. I can spin away some rocks and I also have um, Earthquake for solid coverage against the Fezendipity. So this thing is kind of here to check the Cleaver. I know that that thing is going to be a bit of a threat. It's my easiest switch into that. I can't run Intimidate because I don't want to uh, enable the you know competitive boost or the Defiant on the Ape. But Technician Mach Punch looks pretty nice here in terms of priority. Uh, and that brings us to our final Pokemon, which is going to be the Gyarados. So I'm running Heavy Duty Boots on this thing to be able to come in on the Stealth Rock. I am working with Intimidate here. The reason for that is because um, I can I can switch into the uh, things like the Lead Cleaver or you know, basically Intimidate on anything that isn't going to be the Annihilate is actually pretty nice. This is also going to be a Substitute Dragon Dance set. I wanted to try to see uh, if I can kind of bluff this thing being more... You know, defensive, I'm running max HP still, but a lot of attack. And after I Dragon Dance, the Gyarados is a bit scary. So, with that, this is the team that I'm working with, and let's go ahead and get into the match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. We have our match against Envy here. And let me tell you, this turned out to be an absolutely insane match. Anytime you're going up against a player like Envy, some crazy plays are just bound to happen as this dude is cracked. Now, the first thing I notice about the team preview, no Weavile, which is good for me. And in general, it's, it's kind of a team that I've prepped pretty well against. And I think I have a good shot to try to grab some momentum early. So let's go ahead and jump into the match. So I am fully expecting him to want to lead off with his Stealth Rocker, which is going to come in the form of the Cleaver here. So he does lead off with the Cleaver. I get the prediction correct, and I'm going to lead off with the Gyarados. I'm pretty much just here to get a nice little Intimidate and then get my, my Gyarados out of here immediately. So, obviously my switch into this is going to come in the form of the Hitmontop. So, I want to bring in Hitmontop, and while I'm not double Intimidate, I know that at least with this thing at minus one attack, a Stone Axe is going to do like 15, 20% maybe, as they go for that Stone Axe and end up getting their critical hit. Now the crit is gonna bypass the Intimidate and it's gonna do around 50%, and that is not great for me because from the start, I'm trying to feel this thing out. I imagine it's probably a Scarf Cleaver and this is kind of my best switch into that. But now considering I'm at half, Hitmontop is really kind of hindered, but I know that he's gonna expect the Rapid Spin. So what I'm gonna do is predict him to switch into his Annihilate. Um, and it's kind of just the easy option into Hitmontop. So I'm going to make a double switch here, expecting the Ape to come in, and it works out perfectly. They are going to end up switching into Annihilate here, and this thing is probably like one of the scariest Pokemon to play against. And my team does not have a whole lot of answers to it, but what I do have 
is this Gliscor. So I come in and one thing to note about this matchup is that it's definitely in Annihilate's favor. And plus, if this thing's running any speed investment, I'm gonna go ahead and click agility to ensure that I can be faster than not only this, but the entire team. So it turns out that I go first. I go for that agility and we bait the ice punch perfectly. I have defense investment to guarantee that I can live that. And now that's gonna pop the weakness policy. So we're actually weakness policy Gliscor. I'm able to now double both my speed and my offenses. So this Gliscor now is in a spot where even if this thing is max HP and defense, and acrobatics considering now I no longer have my item should be able to knock this thing out. So I'm just gonna go directly for that acrobatics. Nothing wants to come in here and that just straight up takes care of the Annihilate. I get the critical hit. Again, it doesn't matter that kills regardless. And down goes absolutely the scariest Pokemon on his team that I really did not have much else to do to it. I imagine it was probably running some form of like rest and bulk up and that thing has insane bulk. So seeing that thing gone is ins insanely clutch. Also, Gliscor is in a position now to where if they don't have any defensive prep, this thing literally runs through like the entire team. So they decide to go into the Ferrigarath. Now this thing is in a spot where if he goes into this, it probably has defense investment. I decided to stay in, go for that acrobatics. It is gonna end up hanging on there just barely, fires off the, the psychic noise, and that's going to knock out the Gliscor. Now, while it would be nice to just grab, you know, the Gliscor sweep here, I imagine you know, they, they definitely did have something that can take an attack here. And I'm fully happy to trade the Gliscor for the Annihilate and some damage on the Giraffe. So now here's the thing, I can switch into whatever I like and I decide, you know what, I'm gonna go into the Jolteon here. Jolteon actually has a pretty solid position to either potentially start to set up a Calm Mind. And I honestly imagine since this thing seemed to be defensive, um, I can go for a Volt Switch here. They don't have anything that can come in on that. Um, and a Volt Switch should either knock this thing out if it stays in or be able to grab me, grab me a nice bit of momentum if they switch. But they stay in and the Volt Switch does not end up knocking out the Giraffe. I don't know what the hell Buddy's feeding this thing, but that is extremely unfortunate because now this thing hangs on and now I have to switch something into an attack here. But I have a little bit of a plan in that now I'm gonna decide to go into the Gyarados. So Gyarados obviously intimidates for not much of a reason here as they actually end up going for the Body Slam. So Intimidate does help out a little bit here. We take the Body Slam, luckily don't get parried. And at this point, I'm gonna go for the substitute. So I wanna first of all scout what this thing wants to do. I know that I should be faster and the sub's gonna allow me to do that. But also, I figure if their damage answer here is gonna be the Psychic Noise, that's actually gonna be a sound move. So they go for the Psychic Noise, and while it is a sound move, so it does damage me, but it doesn't actually break my substitute. So now Gyarados is behind a free substitute. I know that I'm faster, and then I can finish this thing off with a Waterfall. So we've got two Pokemon down, and I also have Gyarados out here who is does have some considerable offense, and being behind a substitute, I'm guaranteed to be able to hit something here. So, on the revenge switch, he's now gonna end up bringing in the Raging Bolt. This is another very big threat that he has on his team, and at least I do have the coverage in the form of Earthquake on this Gyarados. So, this thing has to take an Earthquake here. I can also kind of see how this thing is built a little bit. Uh, so I fire off that Earthquake. It's gonna do over half, which is great amount of damage on this thing. Gonna make it a lot easier for the late game. But he is at least able to take one and then finish, me, uh, finish my substitute off with that Volt Switch. So Gyarados, I do lose the substitute, but I get some huge chip on the Raging Bolt. And the, the Volt Switch is gonna allow them a pivot into whatever they like against this thing. And now they decide to bring in the Flygon. So here's the thing, the two Terra Captains that he's working with is gonna be either Flygon or the Ferrigarath. So Flygon is in a spot where he can't click Earthquake obviously against the Gyarados. So I'm feeling like I can actually switch Jolteon in here pretty freely. Now the reason is, because I have something in the old sleeve for if he wants to click Dragon Dance here. Now, I imagine he probably doesn't Dragon Dance immediately, but I know that Jolteon can come in and take an attack. It ends up being the Thunder Punch, which honestly I did not expect, but the Volt Absorb comes in clutch, and now we have an interesting matchup. So here's the thing. I really feel like he's probably Terra Steel Flygon, which means he knows that I'm likely Terra Fairy, and I do have the alluring voice to just straight up knock this thing out if it doesn't commit the Terra. Um, however, I cannot really risk going for a Thunderbolt. If he doesn't Terra, um, I'm in a pretty bad spot here. So I decide to go for the Terra Fairy uh, of my own here and click that Alluring Voice. I figure you know, it's gonna do some solid chip and even with the Terra Fairy, I should be at least able to take an attack that's not uh, a Terra Steel 
you know, Terra Blast. So I put the old heart on my head and he does end up committing uh, the Terra here. And now it's time to see what this thing wants to go for. It turns out it is going to be that Terra Steel. So exactly what I was afraid of. And I really should have made the prediction and clicked the Thunderbolt for the maximum damage here. But of course, Jolteon is faster. I can hit it with that alluring voice. Um, and it's not going to do a whole bunch, but I can at least get a little bit of chip here. And they do go for the expected Dragon Dance. Now, here's where this Jolteon is kind of built for this, in that knowing that this thing is going to Dragon Dance in front of me, it's now faster. However, I'm actually working with the Mirror Herb. So I copy his stat boost, mainly just the speed, because now, since we're both at plus one, I'm still faster. And this allows me to now fire off a Thunderbolt. And unfortunately, it's not quite going to be enough to knock this thing out. And also, I, I really cannot afford to switch here. If they decided to Dragon Dance again, knowing that they can take an attack, I basically get swept. So I roll the dice here. I go for that Thunderbolt. Not going to be able to knock it out. Uh, it then fires off a Terror Blast. And in hindsight, a really good middle ground play, knowing that it was really likely for them to go for the Terra Steel, would have been the Calm Mind. Because then... You know, I'm sitting at plus one special attack. I still copy their speed, uh, and I'm in a much better position there. But Jolteon goes down. I make a bit of a misplay there, but the prediction, it could have gone either way. Uh, I opted for the safe route. And now this Flygon is sitting at plus one, but what I do have is the priority with the Mach Punch on Hitmontop. And now that it's Steel, that is going to knock this thing out. So I'm kind of forced to have to go for this Mach Punch here. And they decide to switch into the Pheasantipity. So this thing is obviously here to be a special tank, and it takes nothing from a mock punch either. I do get a crit, so it doesn't do much. Um, and I do have the Earthquake coverage, but I, I need to try to conserve the Hitmontop as much as possible. It's really my only switch in uh, to something like the, the, the Cleaver. So I make a switch into the Slow King, as he actually makes that prediction, goes for the double switch, and he actually brings right back in the Flygon. Likely expects uh, the Glow King to come out as an answer to the Fez. And now I'm sitting in a spot where Brian does not want to be playing against the Flygon, but I'm really kind of pushed up against a corner here. I'm running out of answers to be able to switch into this thing. Um, my easiest answer would be potentially Gyarados, but I want to try to save and intimidate for the Cleaver. And at this point, I know that I'm actually EV'd to be able to take an Earthquake from this if it doesn't have a Dragon Dance. So I'm going to end up going for the Focus Blast here. They make the Earthquake play, and I know that yeah, I am able to hang on there. Luckily, I do actually connect on a Focus Blast, and that's actually going to end up taking care of the Flygon. So down goes the Terra Captain, huge threat out of the way. I did take some considerable chip uh, on the Sloking, but again, with Regenerator, I can switch this thing out and get some health back, especially after a nice little, little bit of Black Sludge. So. We've got him down to three months at this point, and now on the empty switch, they're going to end up bringing in the Cleaver. So this thing kind of puts my back up against a wall here because I do need to switch out the Sloking here to get that Regenerator. I'll be up around half, um, but a U-turn kills me, and my only real switch in is going to come in the form of Gyarados, who you know can come in, at least intimidate this thing to the point where you know I know that I can live. Um, however... The two other remaining Pokemon they have are going to be faster than the Gyarados to just pick it off. So I just make the play. I switch into the Gyarados here, get that nice little Intimidate. Um, and this thing, it does make the nice play. goes for that U-turn, which, you know, we do live because I'm a bit of a bulky Gyarados. And they tuck the Cleaver in the back for later, who, again, I imagine is Scarf. And it's starting to become his win condition. Being a choice Scarf Cleaver is going to be able to outspeed the Darkrai later on. So they end up U-turning back into the Pheasantipity. And I really, I'm considering switching into either Darkrai or the Slowking here. Um, but I can't really afford to let either take like any chip damage. I don't know what this thing wants to do. So I'm actually just going to stay in here with the Gyarados and click the Earthquake. It is, however, going to be faster. So they have the investment there. Able to uh, knock out the Gyarados with the Poison Jab. Um, but at least I feel like I can get a beneficial matchup here against the Fez. And that is going to be with the, the Galarian Slowking. So I know that I have the Psy Shock here. Uh, to hit it on the defensive side, and with that stab, should be able to do a lot of damage. Plus, I bring this thing in with the health from the Regenerator. I know that this thing probably doesn't have much coverage to be able to do much, you know, to me. So, I'm going to end up just going right for the Psy Shock here, which should do a whole bunch of damage. Now, it turns out, he actually has Thief for the coverage, which is great prep. It does a lot of damage here. I then fire off a Psy Shock, and he actually ends up having the berry to reduce damage from Psychic Attacks, which is actually insane. So the, the berry allows it to easily live. And that was actually quite an unfortunate turn of events because now I'm in a spot where, 
you know, I, I know I probably can't take a thief. Do I have anything that really wants to switch into this? It's, it's pretty much just Darkrai. However, I, I don't feel like Gloking is going to have enough health to, to make a difference against either the Raging Bolt or the Cleaver. So I let him knock me out with the Thief, and that is going to also steal my damn Black Sludge. So this thing being Poison type, I can even use that to its benefit. And I don't even have that much chip on this thing, but what I do have is Darkrai, and I'm actually carrying the Expert Belt on this, which should allow a Psy Shock now that at least I've gotten rid of that Psychic Berry to take this thing out. The problem then becomes that I actually, I do not have anything that can really yeah, handle the cleaver considering it's likely Scarf. So I'm just going to end up going for the Psy Shock here. I can't really set up with a nasty plot because, you know, cleaver comes in uh, and cleaves my ass with the X Scissor or U-Turn. But I can at least Psy Shock this thing that is going to end up taking care of the Pheasantipity. So we're now down. It's two to two at this point. They have Raging Bolts at below half and they have the cleaver. Now I'm also starting to realize that cleaver being the win condition at the Choice Scarf I do not have the resources really necessary uh, to kind of handle this thing. All I can really do at this point uh, is bring in Hitmontop, who can switch into this. Uh, however, you know, at below half, it's getting it's getting pretty close here. I also have the Rocky Helmet to punish this thing attacking me. Uh, but they end up going for the U-turn here. I do live, but this is going to be able to... Um, after the average Rocky Helmet chip, is going to just bring back in the Raging Bolt, you know, who does have the priority with the Thunderclap. So... Tucks the cleaver in the back for later, and this is gonna have to draw out Old Longneck here, who again does have uh, some pretty low health. All I can really do here is go for the mock punch. If he does thunderclap, I end up, you know, going first with the priority. Um, but I go for the mock punch here. We saw that it wasn't likely physically defensive invested, uh, but the mock punch isn't quite gonna be able to be enough to knock it out. And then sadly, a dragon pulse takes care of the hit on top. So. I'm down to my final Mon, which is going to be the Darkrai, and I feel like at least I should be able to knock out the Raging Bolt, uh, but the Cleaver in the back going to be faster with Scarf, and I, I, I'm kind of run, run out of options at this point. So I at least I just decide to go for the Dark Pulse here. I'm thinking easily at least I'm, I can just knock this thing out. It turns out this Raging Bolt, it goes for the Thunderclap, which, you know, I do at least live one. Fire off a Dark Pulse, and this thing turns out to literally be max HP and special defense. It has to be to be able to live that on one. Uh, so now one more thunderclap is going to finish off the dark cry and that is going to be the end of the game so while i felt like i did have very good prep for this and honestly a lot of the things go my way and made some solid plays i also you know i made some misplays which ended up costing me the game and that is going to do it honestly halfway through the match scarf cleaver kind of had itself in a spot where you know it, it kind of locks the game up but regardless honestly super good game it, it does suck to lose a match where i feel like i had you know, good prep and things going my way. Um, but, you know, MV, fantastic player. Definitely go check out his channel if you have the time. I, I, I definitely recommend, you know, his content for getting better at competitive matches. But losing that one really sucks. Honestly, in hindsight, I, I needed to get in Darkrai earlier to start stirring some things up. Uh, and at least conserving Hitmontop as my check to the Cleaver would have would have helped me out. But regardless, it was a very well-played game. The bad plays on my end cost me. And it, it, it is rough going up against guys like this that have a lot of draft experience, whereas I almost have pretty much basically zero. Uh, and these draft matches are completely different than, than you know, just kind of some regular uh, laddering. But regardless, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support. And maybe at some point we'll get a win. <laughs> See ya.